So a uh, viewer wants to know whether Representative Peterson still flies himself around the state. I do. I flew down here this afternoon. So T Tell them what you're flying. I have a 1967 uh, Bonanza V-Tail, mm -hmm. uh, what they call a V-35B. Mm -hmm. And it's a nice little airplane. It's single engine. Uh, it's got a retractable gear. It flies 200 miles an hour. And for my use, it's perfect. You know, I've put on over 5,000 miles on that plane, or 5,000 hours mm -hmm. on that plane since I was elected. And without it, I couldn't do this job. I don't. I challenge anybody to be able to cover that district if you're driving. You wouldn't get anything else done. You know. What's the uh, flight time from one corner of the district to the other? And well, if I flew, to driving time. If I flew all the way from the angle mm -hmm. to Edgerton, well, there's no airport in Edgerton, but um, Pipestone. <clears throat> I could fly that in two hours. It would take eight hours to drive it. So, so it's almost a four to one ratio. Yeah. So I live in Detroit Lakes, you know, which is not the middle of the district, but you know, a little bit north. You know, So I can fly to Marshall in 50 minutes. I can fly to Hutchinson in 45 minutes. You know, I can fly to uh, Alexandria in a half an hour. I can fly to Roseau in 50 minutes. So I can pretty much fly to any place in my district in less than an hour. And so I, that enables me to go to meetings, you know, that they want me there. It's a big meeting of two, 300 people or whatever they're talking about. I can do that because, I, you know, sometimes I can do two or three of those in a day because I can fly, you know. And you know, if you're going to drive, I mean, to go to Marshall, there's no direct... Uh, road to Marshall from Detroit Lakes. I mean, you can take 75, but you go through all these little towns, it takes you forever, you know. Uh, so it's like all the roads in Minneapolis and uh, <clears throat> Minnesota go to the Twin Cities, you know. Whether going north and south, not so much, you know. So I don't know how you do it if you didn't fly. Um, and so I think you're telling us you're on your third engine? Yeah. Well, one of those... <laughs> I blew a, two rods out of the engine. That, that would tend to limit its usefulness. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I, I just had a I just had an annual. You know, you have to do an annual every year. And what's dangerous is is always flying that airplane after you've had an annual because that's when something's going to go wrong. You know, it shouldn't it shouldn't be that way. But that. <clears throat> so I had an annual, and I was fly, I was flew down to Rochester for some meeting. And then I flew back to Saint, South St. Saint Paul, where I keep it, and I picked up my son, and we were going up to the governor's fishing opener up in Bedell. <clears throat> so, so I'd flown to Rochester and flew back, and it just didn't seem right. So I took off from St. Paul, and I got over about five miles north of Crystal, and the engine blew up. I had just gone over the off of the the. Uh, frequency. And I got back on. I told her I got an emergency. I got to land. And she says, well, do a downwind for 3-2 right. And, I, you know, the wind was 25 knots coming from the north because you're supposed to land in the wind. You know? I said, I'm coming in right straight in. She said, well, there's a 20 to 5 knot wind. I said, I know. And the only reason I made the airport was because of that tailwind. If it wouldn't have been for that, I wouldn't have made it. But I got it on the ground and didn't hurt anything other than the engine. I had to get a new engine, which is 40000 bucks. That wasn't any fun. <laughs> Can't uh, Walmart Fleet Farm don't store, don't store those? No, uh, no. Stock them, I should say. 